Hey Trinity, uh, it's great to be with you today. We've been encouraged to record a series of videos that look at the different ways we can explore and express prayer. And today I want to talk about something called Lectio Divina, or as my Latin scholars tell me, Divina. Uh, I'll probably interchange those, Divina doesn't sound right to me, but hey. Uh, and we'll get to that, but if you're anything like me, one of the things I need to do when I set myself for times like this is to start by quietening my soul in the words of Psalm 46 to let go so as to be still. There's a book called Quiet it's by a guy called A.J. Sherrill if anybody wants that as a reference point and he gives a couple of really useful frameworks. He talks about a progression from stillness to silence to surrender and he talks about three things that we need to let go of, become aware of and let go of, so as to become still. He talks about comparison, he talks about competence, and he talks about control. And you know, maybe we're going to listen to a song by Jeremy Riddle, um, but maybe those three things just give you a frame of reference as we start to try and quieten ourselves so here's the song and after that I'll come back and I'll take us on a little further. Yeah. 
can let go Let go of your worries Only one thing is needed Just be still, no Returning to this idea of Lectio Divina, why would we do it? What is it? Well, if it's an aspect of prayer, then we do it to commune with God, to speak to him and to listen to him speak to us. And what is it? Well, rather than hit wiki or try and make up my own version, I've decided to go with an abbot. This is a guy called Christopher Jamison. It's a book called Finding Sanctuary. And this is what we read. Uh, from him. For Benedict, the principal way to meditate and the main way to be in silence creatively is through reading. For him, meditation is always rooted in scripture. Most people today are familiar with meditative techniques that can control their breathing in order to increase their well-being. For purposes from transcendental meditation to blood pressure reduction, Gurus and doctors alike recommend breathing control as a good thing. Even popular forms of speech encapsulate it. Just take a deep breath and relax. The monastic tradition applies similar processes to our reading. This kind of reading is known in Latin as Lectio Divina. Literally translated, this means divine reading but it is more accurately expressed by a phrase like meditative reading. This involves taking a sacred text, usually but not exclusively the Bible, and reading it with the conviction that God is addressing you through this text. Just as prayer involves a person speaking to God as you, so Lectio Divina involves God speaking to the reader as you. The connection between Lectio and prayer is clear. As I let God address me, I feel moved to address God. In response, Lectio Divina leads to prayer and is the monastic way into prayer. So, we've given ourselves an idea of why and a quick run through what, but how. How would you do this if you wanted to? Well, again, turning to finding sanctuary, we read this. First of all, the text is seen as a gift to be received, not a problem to be dissected. The first task to which the tradition invites the modern reader is avoid imposing your questions and let the text question you. Humility is the key to this wisdom. The Australian monk, Father Michael Casey, sums this up well. Lectio Divina is not only a means of discovering something about God, it also helps us to understand our hidden selves. It is not the alienating absorption of a message that is foreign or even hostile to our deepest aspirations. It is the surprising conclusion that our most authentic level of being is mirrored in the scriptures. Let the text come to you. Secondly, the Lectio tradition teaches us that in order to receive what a text has to offer, we must read slowly. This brings to mind the recent slow food movement in Italy, where villages guarantee to visitors that there are no fast food outlets and that all can enjoy their meals in peace. As an antidote to speed reading, we need to foster slow reading. Michael Casey again. Repetition is the soul of genuine Lectio. It is a right brain activity. We do not grasp the entire content immediately, but in a circular manner. We read and advance, then we go back and we read again. With each repetition, something new may strike us. 
Finally, Lectio is a way of prayer. Before reading, pray that God will speak to you through this text. During reading, allow the reading to evolve into meditation and then into prayer and finally contemplation. When the reading is concluded, keep some phrase in mind and repeat it throughout the day so that prayerful reading becomes prayerful living. By this means, Lectio becomes not so much a technique as a way of life. The text reframes daily life and daily life flows into the text. Hopefully that's brought us all to the point of being ready to practice. That's what this is, it's a practice. After this segment, you're going to hear my voice. You're not going to see my face. I'm going to read through some verses from Ephesians 1 and 2 and the words will be on the screen. You can have your eyes open, you can have them closed. Do what feels most comfortable to you. Please feel free to dial out at any time. I'm going to read things through twice. But if you get what you need and what you're supposed to chew over and where the Holy Spirit prompts you, just turn me off and go do what you need to do. So let's pray as we start. Holy Spirit, thank you. You commune with God and you commune with each one of us. And I ask that in these minutes that come, you would take us by the hand and you would lead us into all truth. As the word promises you can do. Amen. Ephesians 1 in the Message Translation How blessed is God, and what a blessing he is. He is the Father of our Master, Jesus Christ, and takes us to the high places of blessing in him. Long before he laid down earth's foundations, he had us in mind, had settled on us as the focus of his love to be made whole and holy by his love. Because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, his blood poured out on the altar of the cross, we are a free people, free of penalties and punishments chalked up by all our misdeeds, and not just barely free either, abundantly free. It's in Christ that we find out who we are, and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us, had designs on us for glorious living, part of the overall purpose he is working out in everything and every one. How blessed is God and what a blessing he is. He is the father of our master, Jesus Christ, and takes us to the high places of blessing in him. Long before he laid down earth's foundations, he had us in mind had settled on us as the focus of his love to be made whole and holy by his love. Because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, his blood poured out on the altar of the cross, we are a free people, free of penalties and punishments, 
choked up by all our misdeeds, and not just barely free either, abundantly free. It's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we are living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us, had designs on us for glorious living, part of the overall purpose he is working out in everything and every one. Ephesians 2, again in the message translation. It wasn't so long ago that you were mired in that old stagnant life of sin. You let the world, which doesn't know the first thing about living, tell you how to live. You filled your lungs with polluted unbelief and then exhaled disobedience. We all did it, all of us doing what we felt like doing, when we felt like doing it, all of us in the same boat. It's a wonder God didn't lose his temper and do away with the whole lot of us. Instead, immense in mercy and with an incredible love, he embraced us. He took our sin-dead lives and made us alive in Christ. He did all this on his own with no help from us. Then he picked us up and set us down in highest heaven, in company with Jesus, our Messiah. Now, God has us where he wants us, with all the time in this world and the next, to shower grace and kindness upon us, in Christ Jesus. Saving is all his idea and all his work. All we do is trust him enough to let him do it. It's God's gift from start to finish. It wasn't so long ago that you were mired in that old stagnant life of sin. You let the world, which doesn't know the first thing about living, tell you how to live. You filled your lungs with polluted unbelief and then exhaled disobedience. We all did it, all of us doing what we felt like doing, when we felt like doing it, all of us in the same boat. It's a wonder God didn't lose his temper and do away with the whole lot of us. Instead, immense in mercy and with an incredible love, he embraced us. He took our sin-dead lives and made us alive in Christ. He did all this on his own with no help from us. Then he picked us up and set us down in highest heaven, in company with Jesus, our Messiah. Now, God has us where he wants us, with all the time in this world and the next, to shower grace and kindness upon us, in Christ Jesus. Saving is all his idea and all his work. All we do is trust him enough to let him do it. It's God's gift from start to finish. <laughs>